Oh, here. they're together. That's oh, right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, we're, we're, we're both here. So um, we're going to kind of go, go in tandem. Um, so we're going to kind of shuffle back and forth. Uh, I am Robert Harris. Uh, I am one of the directors on the board of the Los Angeles Police Protective League. Uh, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to address this task force and give us the chance to highlight why the LAPD is the most professional police organization in the country uh, and why we are the national standard bearer when it comes to policing best practices. Um, I know a um, PowerPoint was given to you all. I don't know if you have that or, or are- Madam Secretary, could you freeze the clock while you pull up the PowerPoint? It always takes us a moment, as you know, with the technology. So sure. Uh, if you could bear with us one moment. Um, I assume you have it, Madam Secretary? I do. Give me one moment. Thank you. Of course. There you go, whenever you're ready. Great. And uh, for um, logistical purposes, are we just going to tell you next slide and then you yes. all will it? OK, great. OK, so you can go to the, the very first or the next slide. Yeah, so if we're talking about policing best, best practices, um, again, I said I think LAPD is a national standard bearer uh, when it comes to these policing best practices. Uh, we are a department that is civilian led. Uh, that civilian board sets the policy of the department. We have the inspector general. Uh, we obviously have a, rebu a robust use of force oversight. Uh, our department is in compliance with Assembly Bill 392, which passed last year. It is the most comprehensive uh, use of force legislation in the country. That includes that every agency in the state of California to include ours, include reverence for life, de-escalation, proportional responses, uh, and a duty to intercede and a duty to report excessive force and misconduct within their policies. We do have a robust training program. Our entire department has been through implicit bias training. We have crisis intervention training and we have command and control training. Uh, we have a Teams 2 early warning system that I'm sure you all are all very aware of uh, that helps us to identify officers that need additional training or mentoring. We do have body cameras, in-dash cameras, and we have a policy for critical incident video release. We have our smart teams to deal with those suffering mental health crises. We have our community safety partnership program and our reset program to help with their homeless crisis. Uh, you can go to the next slide. The tangible and measurable impacts of these stringent policies can be seen in the fact that our department is at a 30 year low when it comes to officer involved shootings. Our officer involved shootings has decreased over 45% over the last five years and our categorical uses of force involving those suffering a mental health crisis has dropped um, 43% in 2019 alone. Next slide please. Hi, I'm Doretta Sandos, and I'll take a couple of, of slides and then we'll switch back. But um, LAPD actively supports recruiting officers. Currently, we have 70% of officers that are of color, 70%, uh, a way improvement uh, from the past. Um, next slide. We all know that Angelinos want to live in a society that's free of crime and free of the incident of crime. Um, the numbers that you see are reported by the victims within our communities. These are the victims. People want to be safe in their community. And the population, I'll just give you, read a couple. Um, the population of African Americans are 9%, Hispanics 49%, whites 28% in the city of Los Angeles. However, the victims of violent crime, 24% are African Americans within the community. Homicides, 40%, rape, 24%, robbery, 15%, aggravated assault, 29%. We have to do better. Next slide. This is the elephant that's in the room. This is what no one wants to talk about, but we're gonna talk about it now. We're gonna talk about the raw numbers and uh, for example, the population, again, African-Americans, 9%, but account for 44% of the violent crimes in the city of Los Angeles, 34% of the homicides, 32% of the rapes, 52% of the robberies, and so on. Hispanics, 48, 49% of the population, but account for 39% of the violent crime, 34% of the homicide. 
These numbers are not concocted by police officers. There's no conspiracy theory here. These are what are reported by the victims of crime and by officers during their investigation. The residents, again, of Los Angeles deserve to be safe in their communities. Looking at these numbers, do black lives really matter in the community? Next slide. So again, African-American suspects account for 13,485 violent crimes. That is 44% of the 30,975 total violent crime suspects in 2019. This is alarming. We have to do better. I'm glad that we're on this call so we can collaborate. The, the residents of our community are suffering. Next slide. Black residents, African-American residents represent 9% of the population of Los Angeles. And we talked about that before. Next slide. We wanna protect the innocent against being victimized by suspects, but it doesn't matter what color they are. A victim is a victim. But if LAPD arrested the 13,485 black violent crime suspects does that mean that LAPD officers are biased against black Angelinos? The answer to that is no. The numbers don't lie. Next slide. What we want you to understand as LAPD officers work in the streets, sworn to protect and serve the community, is that LAPD officers target criminal behavior, not race, not creed, not color, not sexual orientation, we target criminal behavior and period. We want our residents to be safe. That's why we wear the badge. That's why we come to work each and every day. Next slide. And Rob will take over from here. Yeah, and, and part of what the Los Angeles Police Protective League is seeking to do, uh, because we firmly believe that our department is the national standard bearer, is we have taken a leadership role, not just here in the state, but nationally when it comes to the discussion of reforms. Because nearly all reforms that are being talked about are already in place within our department, we have uh, gotten ourselves a position and a seat at the table on a federal level. Part of what we did uh, in launching a campaign for a national reform plan uh, was to begin some polling to see where the Los Angeles voters are when it comes to reform. In our polling, we found out that voters do support real reform that maintains police services. 86% of those polled in LA City rejected the concept of the people's budget. Next slide, please. What you're seeing are, are some stats that we pulled out uh, from that polling. Uh, and you will see that over 90% support for things like determining which nonviolent and non-emergency calls don't require a police response. Uh, over 90% support for determining which calls require specially trained officers and mental health experts to help us safely manage those crisis incidents. Next slide. We also found 93% support for increasing funding for things like de-escalation and crisis intervention for our officers. 90% support for implementing a national database of officers fired for gross misconduct, which prevents them from being hired by other agencies, which is part of the LAPPL National Reform Plan. Next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. So um, as far as the President Obama's task force on the 21st century policing, in short, this is what it says. Law enforcement agencies should adopt procedural justice as guiding principles for internal and external policies. It goes on to say, it follows that officers who feel respected by their organizations are more likely to bring this respect into their interactions with the people they serve. This is President Obama's words. Now, I can tell you today, LAPD officers do not feel respected by their city leaders. And here's why, and just a little background. I have 27 years on this job. I came on this job to work in my communities, to make my community safe. I grew up in South LA. I worked 77 Southwest, Southeast Vision. But let me tell you why officers do not feel uh, supported. It's because there's little to no public recognition by police commission, political leaders, excuse me, political politicians on advancement made by LAPD over the last several decades. Reform plans that include items already implemented by LAPD, public 
ridicule by city leaders, city politicians of department and the officers. Zero rationale for the $150 million budget cut, zero analysis of impacts these cuts have on public safety. Leadership is void. Fail to condemn attacks against police officers and that's up 156%. The community that we serve, the majority love police. They support police. To the police commission, the mayor, city council, you should model the 21st century policing principles that you promote internally. The failure to do so has led to the lowest police officer morale since I've been on this job, which is 27 years. You have to do better protecting your police officers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time. I know both of you are extremely busy um, and you do a great service to the city and your fierce advocates for the police department and the police officers. So thank you for that. Should there be any, any uh, concern about where the police commission is on attacks on police officers, let me make it very clear, we condemn it. There is no uh, excuse for attacking police officers. Um, absolutely, 100%. And I, while all the police commissioners are not here tonight, um, I know with confidence that I do speak for them on that. Um, we do appreciate your zealous advocacy. Um, we do also appreciate, in my experience, the Police Protective League has been a collaborator, collaborator on reform. Uh, we will be coming to you with more <laughs> efforts to collaborate, uh, for sure. This is an important opportunity for all of us to work together uh, on the, in the benefit of our communities. I do thank you for your time tonight and for your detailed presentation. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you.